It's time to play Who Wants to Be the Best Modulaire? Shoei's all in with the Neotech 2. I'm tired of losing sales to the soundproof Schuberth. They spent six years saving the pennies from the original Neotech and spent them on a wind tunnel. What is the aerodynamic innovation? Is it A, quieter exhausts, B, new shell spoiler, C, chin deflectors that push air away from the opening, or D, visor turbulencers to prevent whistling. All of the above, plus expanded cheek pads to seal out whatever pesky air that still happens to get through. And the result is the quietest omelet on the market. They did break a few eggs getting there though, the largest of which would be A, price. And they're charging almost $1,000. Ah! That's Schuberth territory. Though I suppose that's kind of the point. B, a soundproof bubble can only be made in a fog factory. And Shoei does give us the best pin lock on the market as penance. C, to engineer quiet, you have to engineer tight. I think the mechanical tolerances on these panels are too small because there's so much friction, I can hardly open the vents with sticky fingers, let alone with gloves. And D, a ratchet strap. And Schubert uses them, so Shoei had to have one too. Whether or not North Americans like these, we don't, they dig into our double chins. Now Shoei doesn't care. And the biggest downside is none of these. It's weight. Of course it's weight. Quiet helmets are always heavy, and at 1,815 grams, well, this medium is no exception. The Neotech 2 comes in many colorways. Avoid matte, unless you plan to use the helmet without touching it. We have six sizes covered by four shells, so more bespoke than most. And you can get a Senna SRL that plugs into this ready-made triangular port if Senna ever delivers on it, and if you can stomach buying what is essentially an outdated 20S Evo. Kinda wish Shoei just left the shelf flat for mounting better comm systems. Picardo! All right, ladies and gents, we've seen the quietest modular. Now let's see the lightest. My medium AGV sport modular weighs 1,460 grams. How do they do it? The password is carbon. So we have element number six everywhere. And that'll give me the same impact attenuation as our competition race helmet. It'll also cost me $950. The password is small. Both chin bar and face shields spin on a hinge that is no bigger than a toonie. Most modulars use two separate pivot points or one massive one, but AGV engineered less weight by minimizing metal. The password is titanium. 43% lighter than steel. And we ain't engineering to a budget here, so why not? So the sport modular is all about being light. But it's funny, my favorite thing it's actually the style. The password is simple. Most modulars are over-designed, but here there is one line on the whole helmet, a continuous gorgeous swoop. You'd be forgiven for mistaking this lid for a MotoGP full face. Incidentally, the one line now creates lift. So this helmet actually has zero weight at 130 kilometers an hour. It's just too bad it's impossible to do 130 in any Canadian speed zone. So the sport modular is racy. Now opening the box must feel like peering into Agostini's soul. Props for using a helmet bag that actually fits. And this is an Italian supermodel in Lycra, opposed to some hick in jeans. Now it's time to play. The visor is 190 degrees wide. You already know what that looks like. It's the same as your natural peripheries. But vertically, you're going to be staring through the gun sight of the locking clip. Hot or not, your call. The padding is reversible. I have a fat chin curtain and a skinny one. I have plush and hot on one side and cool and wicking on the other. Hot or not, it is literally your call. The rear spoiler is the cheapest plastic I've felt since Kinder Surprise. And empirically, I can't tell the difference between up and down. AGV, just mold this into the shell at the middle position. Save yourself the time, money, noise, style. Definitely not hot. And fit? 
My chin rubs against the chin bar. The strap rubs against my neck. I wish I could make this helmet work because it is stunningly light and well made, but it's just not for everybody's head. So we've seen the quietest and lightest, but the LS2 FF399 is the most useful. In fact, it puts Shark's evil line in jeopardy. What is the Valiant? It is a Valiant effort at stealing Shark's design for a truly convertible helmet. And this is PJ homologated, meaning it passes ECE for a protective full face, P, and also for a jet helmet, J. And you can legally ride with it open or closed. This is blank than the Shark Evil Line 3. What is better? It feels better made, and it's definitely better engineered. And the Shark is gonna grind, it's gonna scrape, especially if you fail to open the visor before flipping. But here, I mean, look, it's way smoother. And how clever is that? It opens the visor for you. Seamless. Also, the Valiant is neutral, which fits most of us, while the Evil Line is round, which does not. But most importantly, it's cheaper. And the LS2 sneaks under 400. Now we have all the quality you'd expect from a mid-range modular, except it kinda looks like, who is Genie from Aladdin? The chin bar has to be fat and jovial like this to clear the rest of the helmet. So I get it. Also, the visor tab is at the top presumably so the chin bar can clear the bottom of it. It's kind of awkward to have to block your vision while opening the shield, but again, I get why that's the way it is. I also get why it's hard to mount a comm on here. A Senna makes a bespoke Lincoln Ride Pal 4 LS2, which is your only option, so I won't say it sucks. Daily Double. Hey, what is a narcissist? It's a company that doubles up on their branding and puts umpteen mirrors on a helmet so you can stare at yourself. So the style is a bit loud, and the noise is very loud, and LS2 claims a bullshit 1700 grams, yet my medium weighs 1920, and I know that sounds like a lot, but that is everything. In all other respects, this is a super functional, well-made bucket, sun visor, ratchet strap, metal hardware. It even comes with a velvet inflatable gift, which sounds like a sex toy, but is actually a donut. Here it comes. The best value is a helmet where the price is right. HJC, come on down. CL Max 3 for under 200, ARFA 90 for under six. Both exceptional value. The new CL3 has the venting scheme off of an Arfa lid, so it's high-end cool. HJC also added the sun visor off an IS Max. Only rather than getting the IS's creaky spring, our CL has a more foolproof cable actuator. It's still in the most illogical spot known to mankind, but at least that makes mounting a calm easy. Now, cheap modulars usually scare me because it's a complex thing to build to a number, but HJC, how they have the clout not to suck. And this CL flips as smooth and as metallic as anything on our list. Having added an internal sun visor and abandoned the old round head shape that fit 20% of riders at best, there's no way HAC will upsell anyone to the IS Max at 270 bucks. And this CL Max 3 is an equivalent helmet for way better value. Ah, one caveat. HJC is making but one shell size for this guy. So if you have a large head, well, no worries. If you're an extra small, be prepared to receive a huge shell and an 1835 gram weight all the same. Now, if your price is right at $550, the ARFA 90 has the best value. HJC took the old 2012 ARFA Max and swapped in their racing shell from the ARFA 11. So 1,585 grams for this large, well, it's almost as light as the AGV Sport Modular. HJC also added ceiling pads to the neck roll, making it nearly as quiet as the Neotech 2. What you're looking at is the best all-around modular available, full stop. The fact that it also happens to be reasonably priced, that's just a bonus. Now, some of the other refinements were only half successful. The sun visor is bigger than before, but HJC forgot to put a position lock on the bottom so it bounces around while walking. I mean, she hasn't guillotined my nose yet, but it is threatening. 
HJC also added reflectives above the eye port. It's a nice touch, you'll rarely see this side of shoe berth, but on an already short face shield, eh, I might have preferred a taller field of view. In general though, the Arfa 90 is impeccable. It feels for all the world like a thousand dollar helmet, but costs half that. And we're done. Quietest, lightest, most versatile, most value. And 2018 might have been a disappointing year for full faces, but man, did we see game changers in the modular world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to have your pets spayed or neutered.